And welcome to another episode of Sacktown Underground, our two-year bonanza. We're so glad you could join us. I am your host, Keith Joganis. Got a great show for you in store. We'll start off with JBS Productions, a catering service in Sacramento, California, here in our city that does every kind of food, and they'll help you out. All you got to do is hit them up. We'll have you more with more of them. Also, Sinister Creature Con. It is a creature con that focuses on monsters and specializes in makeup and arts with such uh, scary films and things of that nature. We'll have for you that for you as well. Followed by Zombie Art Mix, a art mix dedicated totally to zombies. If you like people who are dead, come back from the dead, things of that nature. We'll have that for you in the next set as well. Followed by me with sports. I have a lot to talk about in that as well. Women's Working Expo, an expo that is dedicated solely on women who are in the workforce and powering them. Have more fear on that. And followed up with an interview from Matthew Gilliam with our own Miss Mouthpiece. That is all coming up on Sacktown Underground. And as usual, we will kick things off on Sacktown Underground with our Sacramento 365 calendar that highlights all the great events coming up in our great city of Sacramento, California. And as usual, that was our Sacramento 365 calendar highlighting all the great events coming up in your city of Sacramento, California. Hopefully, you'll be able to get out of the house and check some of those out. We now move on to our next story, which is JBS Catering Services, a catering service in Sacramento, California that specializes in all different kinds of food. And our very own Caitlin Ellis sat down in an interview to talk with them about their products. Take it away, Caitlin. Hi, I'm Caitlin Ellis with Sacktown Underground, and today we're here at the Citizen Con of 2018. And today I'm here at Jack's. So, can you explain what um, company you're a part of? JBS Productions is a volunteer organization that helps at conventions and movie promotions, and we even do a senior center anniversary, which is a different theme every year. Today, we're here at Sinister Creature Con, and we are doing the Oasis Tiki Bar. And basically, it's just for um, you know for people to walk by and pick up snacks. We have sodas and water and sweet things and salty things, and everything's a dollar. And we do it more as a service than anything else. The money that we raise goes into buying more product and it gets donated to charity. Oh. So if anybody wants to find out more, where would they find you? Uh, JBS Productions is online at, uh, you can find us on Facebook and we're hoping to launch our own website soon. So besides today's event, what other events do you do? One of the events that we have coming up in a week, in fact it's only like three days away, is Carefree Senior Living Center's anniversary. They do their anniversary party for the opening of the center every October and this year we're doing a historical version of the Kentucky Derby. So we've got costume characters from the 1870s dressed up and we're going to run a race, a run for the roses, and the Boy Scouts of the local area are actually our jockeys in costume to run the race. Oh, that's great. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Would you like to plug anything? I saw a couple of flyers, a couple of events coming up. Oh, good heavens. We have tons of flyers. Um, our biggest event is Time Travelers Bazaar. It takes place in October, and it's uh, time travelers from everywhere. We have people from the Renaissance. We have people from the future. Uh, this last August, we had Harry Mudd and some of his uh, Orion slave girls dancing for us. Uh, we also work at SAC Anime. We run the SAC Geeks table so that we take free pictures of people. They can get a good digital photo of their costume or their friends. You can download it from our Facebook page for SAC Geeks. We also have Twelfth Night, which is a Renaissance historical dinner taking place in January of this year. And another upcoming one that's a lot of fun, uh, it's a great day trip, is All Hallows Fantasy Fair in Sonora. 
and it's if you can imagine taking a renaissance fair and smashing it up with like one of the best Halloween parties you've ever been to that's their show we do their masquerade there which is held in the evening and we have uh, beginners intermediate and master competitions with uh, prizes and awards and even a cash prize and then there's another thing that we work on though we're not able to attend it so it's kind of fun and that's Vampire Ball. Vampire Ball is the 27th of October. It's a Saturday. It's at the um, California uh, Automobile Historical Museum. And I'll tell you, if you're looking for a party, that is the place to be. Great. Thank you for joining us today. Is there anything else you'd like to share before we close out? Well, thanks so much for asking me and for being interested in what we're doing because we're really happy to do anything with the community. We're about community, and if you're not having fun, you're obviously in the wrong place. So come play with us. Thank you for that, Caitlin, and a great catering service, and hopefully their business will continue to thrive in the coming weeks, days, months, and years. Our next story focuses on Sinister Creature Con. It is an expo that features on makeup and styling certain people and individuals for certain movies and uh, acting and theater purposes. And our very own Celestial Thomas caught up with the founders of the Sinister Creature Con. Take it away, Celestial. All right, guys, Celestials from Sacktown Underground here at Sinister Creature Con of 2018, standing alongside. Hi, I'm Brian. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Very good, Brian. How are you? Oh, it's hectic, but in a good way, so yeah. Sinister Creature Con, love. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, well, we launched uh, 2015. Uh, actually, uh, the owner, Tim Yune, was the uh, original launch uh, person. Uh, I came in about 2016, uh, came in as social media, then uh, worked right into producing. So, uh, so me and him have been running it since 2016 together. Uh, it's been growing. Uh, I think we had a backbone already with Sacramento Horror Film Festival. Uh, we just celebrated 12 years last month of that, so we already had a nice backbone in Sacramento uh, with our fan base. And I think that really helped uh, kind of kick this off right out the gates. So. So if you could love, what is the mission statement of Sinister Creature Con? Uh, it's a come one, come all, and be who you want to be for at least two days, you know. Uh, <laughs> we absolutely just enjoy the process of, uh, of craft, uh, the filmmaking process, the makeup effects. Uh, that's kind of what our original goal was when we launched this. Real heavy makeup, makeup effects, practical effects. Uh, being able to kind of show people that you can do something that's kind of outside the box, so to speak. Whether it's uh, writing, effects, you know, directing, acting, whatever that is. Um, our whole idea is to be able to kind of inspire other people. Um, and for us, if one person showed up and it was super inspiring for them and they went on to do things because they felt they can, then we're, we're super happy and we, we accomplished what we wanted. So, and Sitting alongside Mr. Bam from Jackass, how are you doing today, love? I'm doing good. Just flew in from Philadelphia. Uh, did some skateboarding with Andy Roy, skate legend anti-hero right here. Hello. And uh, yeah, so we skated for two days in SF. Now we're in Sacramento at the Comic-Con, having a good time, signing some stuff. So what is going on with you and what is what's happening in your future? Uh, well, I just had a uh, son named Phoenix Wolf. Um, Congratulations! He's, he's nine months, he's around here somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, uh, just skateboarding a lot with uh, Element and um, doing a lot of Comic-Cons and uh, we've been working on this show called Monkey Knife Fight, which we go to like tailgating football parties, you know, like the Bears versus the Seahawks or whatever, and we'll walk around with a duffel bag of money daring people to do stuff, you know, like put a mousetrap to your tongue or, you know, shave your head in a weird spiral and give them money, see how much, what they would do for the cash. So. Understood. Yeah. <laughs> I think you'll probably get a good audience for <laughs> Yeah. All right, love, thank you so very much for talking with us today. Yeah, Are you enjoying your time at Sinister Creature Con? Yeah, yeah, it's been great. Awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome. Well, thank you very much for talking to us today, and I wish you very good luck for not only your fatherhood, but for your future as well. Thank yeah, you. I appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you so very much. Yeah. Thank you for that celestial, impressive work as usual. Our next story focuses on the zombie art mix, an art mix dedicated to zombies, which has become so popular in pop culture nowadays and movies and books and things of that nature. And once again, Celestial is back at it at the zombie art mix. Take it away, Celestial. All right, this is Celestial Thomas here from Sacktown Underground. I am here at the art mix featured at the Crocker Art Museum, standing next to Miss Stephanie Longoria. Miss Longoria is the public engagement coordinator and is responsible for giving us this lovely art mix event. Now, Miss Stephanie Longoria, tell us a little bit about what art mix is. When did it get started? 
Uh, it's been going for about seven years now, and uh, every month we turn the museum in kind of a nightclub event. Um, it's always a different theme, uh, and whatever the theme is, I coordinate uh, the activities and the bands and the performances and everything around it. Uh, occasionally it has to do with an exhibit, but other times like tonight, it's just Art Mix Zombie. Now I saw that, um, it's like usually on Thursdays, is that accurate? Yeah, it's every second Thursday of the month. Every second Thursday, awesome. And tonight, obviously, as you can tell, I'm a little bit thematic. <laughs> it's the Art Mix event, but tonight is featuring zombies. And if you look around, there's a whole bunch of scary looking people. I'm not really into gruesome, but this is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite part about it tonight? Oh, I love the Carnival of the Dead here tonight. And I just love partnering with the Sacramento Zombie Walk. Uh, they're all great people and, you know, they bring a lot to Sacramento. And so I love just the performers. So what do you feel embodies the mission statement of what Art Mix is to Sacramento? Hmm, that's a hard one. Uh, <laughs> so I think that Art Mix is designed to uh, bring different groups of people in every month so that everybody feels like the museum is theirs. So tonight, people who love zombies, the museum is theirs. <laughs> Last month, it was CrockerCon, and so it was all about comic books and uh, comic book makers and artists. And so it was about making the museum theirs for that night. And then the month before that was Viva. It was uh, Latino-oriented, because um, we had an artist, Edward, Eduardo Carrillo. We had his exhibit up, so we had you know a bunch of people who, that night, it was all for them. So And then some people come every month, no matter what the theme is. Well, as a Sacramentan, I, you know, always have frequented the Crocker Art Museum because of its paintings and its ceramics and what it, you know, it's a piece of history for Sacramento. So what you're doing is kind of revamping it and giving it a new name. When, how do you feel it's connecting with Sacramentans now? Well, I think that it's making the museum seem a little less stuffy, uh -huh. you know? <laughs> You know? It's definitely a lot less stuffy, I'll tell you. It's a crazy night tonight. A little bit spooky, guys. Yeah. A little bit spooky. And then, you know, it just makes it... And we have events uh, every Thursday. So we have music events, we have movie nights, we have all of these things. And so we want the museum to feel like a place It's just like everybody's place. And so uh, for this night, at least, we have fun. And we just make it crazy every month. Halloween, guys. Celebrate here at the Crocker Art Museum. It's zombie night tonight. And then for future events, definitely check out Art Mix and see what's going on. Support a local gem here at the Crocker Art Museum. Miss Stephanie, thank you so very much for joining us. Thank you for that, Celestial. Such an impressive wide variety of zombies. We now turn to sports, where I will have the sports segment for you as we talk about everything in the world of sports. Take it away. Years ago, working the night shift at my old part-time job, I watched as Colin Kaepernick and the 49ers played Aaron Rodgers in the Green Bay Packers at Candlestick Park. The game was one for the ages, as Colin Kaepernick rushed his way into the hearts of fans all around the world. He carried the 49ers on his back that night. Over 200 yards rushing, over 200 yards passing, and he was remotely unstoppable. It was like watching a Madden video game in real life. I look back on that game now. And I go back to today and this week, where Colin Kaepernick has become the face of Nike's Just Do It campaign, celebrating their 30 years in the business. And I think it's unfathomable how Colin Kaepernick went from that game to now the face of the Black Lives Matter movement, to taking a knee, to standing up for what he believes in with the national anthem. No one expected this from Kaepernick. No one expected the fall for Kaepernick to be that great. Now Colin Kaepernick is a part of Nike. He's getting paid, and he's getting paid to stand up for what he believes in. And for a lot of people, that's just something they can't stand. Overnight, the same people who mocked Kaepernick, who said maybe he can get a job working at McDonald's, are boycotting Nike in the process. They burn shoes. They burn shoes on their feet. That's not very smart. They've boycotted Nike completely. The same people who voiced their rage that Kaepernick would disrespect the military and disrespect the flag, now, our boycott and Nike. Now, they are not going to want to spend their money on Nike. But that's okay, because Nike's online sales went up 31% after Kaepernick's commercial aired on TV Thursday night during the Eagles-Falcons game. And this is still going on. Colin Kaepernick hasn't played a down in the NFL in over two years, but people are still mad. People are still angry. People still cannot believe that anyone would put a person like Kaepernick on a billboard, on a commercial, or just on anything in general, for a company. They say 
Why not Pat Tillman on that ad for Nike instead of Colin Kaepernick? Pat Tillman risked his life fighting for what he believed in in Iraq, died via friendly fire. But this is what people don't realize about Pat Tillman. Pat Tillman did not go to Iraq to protect the freedom, the democracy, the values that we all love and cherish here in the United States of America just for people that were like Pat Tillman. Pat Tillman went to Iraq and risked his life for people that weren't like Pat Tillman to have the same ideals and freedoms and abilities as Pat Tillman and his friends do. Colin Kaepernick and Pat Tillman come from different sides of the universe. But I think in an alternate world, they both would agree that America is the greatest country in the world. Its values, its ideals, and everything it stands for are what makes it America. I have the freedom to stand on this desk. I have the freedom to talk to you. I have the ability to say what I feel. And I am grateful for that as an American. If I don't agree with you or if you don't agree with me, it does not make my opinion less valuable than yours. All Colin Kaepernick said was that he was sick and tired of seeing policemen go on paid leave for killing African Americans and minorities in general. And everyone freaked out. This country is built on the principle that you can do anything that you want because we have people in our military who died for that service. But for anyone to call anybody else un-American, unpatriotic, or a communist, just because they take a knee on a football field, that's not American. American is respecting someone's opinions. American is respecting the fact that we all love this country and we all have different ideas. Whether you are Colin Kaepernick or Pat Tillman, that is why this country is the greatest in the world. That is the reason that a kid who never knew his parents, who grew up with a white family, didn't have one Division I offer, walked on to Nevada, became a star in college and then in the pros, and then risked it all. That is why America is the greatest country, because you get stories like that. That was Sports Feud. Hopefully everything gets better in regards to Colin Kaepernick and kneeling during the flag and just protests in general the NFL. But unfortunately, your politics have set us up to fail. All right, and we now turn to the Women's Working Expo, a working expo that is dedicated solely to women in the workforce. And our very own Celestial is back at it at the Women's Working Expo. Take it away, Celestial. All right, guys, welcome to Sacktown Underground. I'm out here with Mr. Dwayne. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. It's, uh, I'm a little sweaty, but I'm, I'm good. <laughs> He's a hardworking man. We're out here at the SAC Women's Expo for the Women's Working, what is it? Women Working, working in fashion, fashion, fashion? Working show. Women in Fashion Show today here at the Sacramento Convention Center. Dwayne, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I am the producer of Sacramento Fashion Week, so this event is kind of like a preview of what's to come for our showcases in February. And today, what is the Women Working Women's Fashion Show. What do you want to hope to highlight with that? Um, well, today we're highlighting three designers and one kids wear designer. Um, these designers all have showcased through um, Sacramento Fashion Week. Mm -hmm. um, so you got casual wear, you got business, you got um, you know evening wear. So it kind of it's different things from different designers to kind of help promote women. It's all about women. Uh, working women because it's the women's you know expo uh, we're also previewing a uh, kids wear designer because I'm bringing kids fashion week hi everyone I am Janelle Cardenas with love by Janelle Cardenas today I'll be showcasing my children's collection and hope you guys enjoy all right Miss Janelle so give us a little bit of background about yourself and what you are doing here today and what brought you here today and along with your journey sure <laughs> Um, I've been designing now for about 10 years. Um, I primarily design women's clothing. Um, my daughter was born 2012 and she inspired me. Um, she's very fashionable, sassy, and she inspired me to make my first full kids collection. Um, and I showcased that 2018 during Sacramento Fashion Week. And today I'm presenting that same collection as a preview for Sacramento's Kids Fashion Week coming in 2019. And so how would you describe your fashions? Um, it's been described as um, vintage with a modern twist. Um, I like clean lines, but I love prints, and I like to have a little edge. So florals, lace mixed with leather, 
um, and you guys will see more. I'm here with Miss Angelie and her lovely daughter Jordan, who will be in the fashion show later today. Want to tell us a little bit about yourselves, ladies? So I'm Angelie. This is Jordan. Jordan's seven years Hi. old. <laughs> beautiful ladies, beautiful ladies. Uh, what brought us here today is uh, we know Janelle. She is walking for a love by Janelle. Um, it's a kids' clothing line. She walked in it in the Sack Fashion Week back in February, and Janelle asked her to come again. So we said, sure, why not? Uh, anything for the community that's, uh, you know, this is a positive movement. We wanted Jordan to be a part of it. And so for, as a working mother and bringing your daughter out here like that, what do you hope to inspire for other working women and for their children? My advice that I can say is just have fun with it. Uh, know that you might not always get to everything on your to-do list and that's okay. Uh, there's always tomorrow and just kind of you know, just enjoy that moment for what it is. Don't get worried about what's not being done or what's next to come. It's very inspiring to see young women out in the industry like that and getting started so young and with great passion as well. So thank you very much for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time. And that was Celestia with the Women's Working Expo. And as usual, we close out our show here on Sacktown Underground with a live performance. We'll first have an interview with Matthew Gilliam with Miss Mouthpiece, a soul singer. We'll follow it up with her closing performance. Thank you for joining us here on our two-year bonanza here from Access Sacramento for Sacktown Underground. Take it away, Matt. Thank you, Keith. Yes, we are so excited about our two-year anniversary here at Sacktown Underground. But what's more exciting is that we're sitting here with artist Miss Mouthpiece. Miss Mouthpiece, how are you today? I am great. How are you? Fantastic. You know, just very excited about our two-year anniversary here on Sacktown Underground. It's been a fantastic journey and we are so happy to have you here. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, and so can you, I, I might know the answer to this question, I think, but can you tell us who is Miss Mouthpiece? I am a artist, I'm a poet, singer, community-based educator, mother, friend, sister, um, and poet. I think that I say poet, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of hats that you're wearing, so you know, it's, yeah, but so that's a lot. And uh, so can you tell us what is Miss Mouthpiece then? What drives you? Wow, um, what drives me is to inspire others through music, through lyrics, content, um, to kind of leave an impact to let somebody know that there's hope um, in music and through writing as well. Wow, yes, hope is an important thing. So how long have you been performing? I've been singing professionally for 20 years. 20 years, yes. wow, yes. Now, so that you're very much a tenured artist then. Yes. So Miss Mouthpiece, can you tell us where some of your favorite places to perform have been? Absolutely, one of my favorite places to perform was in Manhattan, New York. Um, there was a venue that you actually get to stand outside and perform and people kind of walk past and discover you as an artist. Um, and also my, my base place that I love performing was when I started in Japan. Um, Okinawa, um, that's one of my favorite places started from my career. Wow, so those places are far and away from Sacramento. Right. Uh, now, what? A, another question for you, what drives you as an artist? What drives me um, is to inspire, to impact, to be an influence, um, to be a motivator, um, to give lyrics of content to help somebody's soul and give them hope as well. Wonderful. Now, you're going to perform a couple of songs for us today. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about those songs? Um, my first song that I wrote is called Forward, uh, which is so fitting for your second anniversary. It's moving forward um, into your destiny. And also my second song is called um, I Need Peace. And we need peace in the world. Um, and it's so fitting for my name, Miss Mouthpiece, as well. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We are moving forward here on Sacktown Underground and we're very happy to be celebrating our two year anniversary. And we are definitely advocates for peace here on Sacktown Underground. So without further ado, uh, I'd like to present to you Miss Mouthpiece. Hi, my name is Miss Mouthpiece. You can find my music on Spotify, YouTube, and MissMouthpieceMusic.com. My first song I will be performing today is called Forward. I'm moving down. I'm moving 
Bring forward. I'm moving down. I'm moving. I'm moving down. I'm, I'm moving forward. The forward. I'm moving down. I'm moving. Yeah. I'm sitting at the edge of the bay. Estimation again. Wondering, yeah, what's next? But I kept on soaring. Darkness tried to creep in, but light it always wins. No weapon formed again. Forward. I can taste it, I can feel it within. I'm closer than I ever been. It's been spoken, now it's time to live. Forward. I'm moving down. I'm, I'm moving. Bring forward the forward the I'm moving down I'm moving Yeah I can see myself so clear In them lights walking in them stairs And this is what we put in To me is my base Giving God all the praise Thanking family, friends and in the maze Without you I wouldn't fade Forward I'm moving down, I'm moving forward, the very I'm moving down, I'm moving, I'm moving down, I'm, I'm moving forward, the very I'm moving down, I'm moving, I'm moving down every day. Oh yeah, I'm pressing my way. Yeah, I'm moving down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm moving down. I'm pressing, pressing for as I'm moving down. I'm, I'm moving. I'm closer to the close to my I dreams. I'm closer to the close to my I dreams. I'm closer to the close to my I dreams. I'm closer to the close to my I dreams. I'm closer to the close to my I dreams. Closer to the close of my dreams, my dreams, my dreams. I'm moving on, moving forward. I'm closer to the close of my dream, dreams, yeah. Cause I'm moving down, I'm, I'm moving forward, the forward. I'm moving down, moving. I'm closer to the close of my dreams. 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 My dreams. My dreams.